the Distinguished International Crisis Group. An official from the International Crisis Group, think tank, International Crisis Group. The latest report by the International Crisis Group warns that... The International Crisis Group, that's a non-profit organization working to prevent and resolve deadly conflict. The core business of the International Crisis Group is conflict prevention, conflict resolution, telling governments what they don't want to hear, getting them to do things they don't want to do. What makes Crisis Group really distinctive, I think, is the kind of advocacy we do. It's the very direct face-to-face -face contact with high-level decision-makers and those who influence them. We really are, I think, capable of talking to the people that matter in a language that they understand and with a professionalism that they respect. The ICG benefits uh, from being independent. It's an effective organization because it's focused on real problems. This organization can put people on the ground who really are experts, they speak the language, they embed, they extract from the local situation, and it's packaged, formatted, and presented in a way that makes it adaptable by policymakers. The International Crisis Group was really born out of some terrible failures by the international community to anticipate the catastrophic violence that occurred in the Balkans and in Rwanda in particular in the mid-90s, and then to do anything really decent about it. At that time we found, much to our astonishment, that we as this little tiny NGO could wield tremendous influence over the international community there, including NATO, including the Office of the High Representative, simply because we had people who were willing to go out in the field, talk to the locals in their own language, find out what the real problems were. I think it was partly the very good and accurate work that we were doing, and partly also a growing recognition that the international community's model for Bosnia was not working, was being unsuccessful, um, that made us really very effective indeed on the ground. <laughs> The bedrock of Crisis Group's credibility is the quality of our analysts on the ground. We don't just sit behind computers in Brussels or Washington, flying in, flying out to do these reports. Our analysts really do have dust on their boots. We go out into the fields, uh, we try to find out exactly what's going on in the field. What are the origin of these crises? You need to be talking to all the parties, uh, look into their motivations, their calculations, uh, what it would take to bring them to agree. Based on that information, we try to go back and say, well, here's a political conflict, here's what's going on, and um, this is what we can do to stop it. The reason I think this works is because the International Crisis Group was created by people who used to work in the international diplomatic community, who have contacts with people at, at very high levels. What has been happening to these people? We turn to John Prendergast. The difference with the International Crisis Group is we roll up our sleeves, we get involved with the diplomats, with the generals, with the presidents and prime ministers and the rebel leaders, and we get deeply involved in these peace processes. There hasn't been a peace deal in Africa in the last five years that the International Crisis Group hasn't been involved in behind the scenes and helping to secure the deal. The work that we've done in Southeast Asia in penetrating and understanding the roots, the sources of terrorist violence has been described by some of the major intelligence agencies as gold standard, better than anyone else is producing. We have contacts of my own and of other people working for the organization that go back 20 years so that we could look back beyond the immediate bombings, for example, in Bali, and look at the people who were assumed to have been involved in that, look at their backgrounds, and through knowing their backgrounds, we were able to figure out the networks that these people moved in. I think our reporting, uh, which has been done in extensive detail and has really shown how this group organized and how it operated, that's convinced a great many people within Indonesia, and it's also convinced the government that this is an important challenge that it has to take it seriously. It also means that what we can produce is uh, is a kind of accounting uh, and a kind of background that even intelligence agencies around the world can't produce.
I think you know you're being effective when the Foreign Minister of Afghanistan comes here into this office and says, please let me know what you think we're doing wrong and what we can do to fix it. We're talking about a country where, you know, 70% of the population are illiterate. Um, 30 years of war has just laid waste to what institutions there were. When you talk about a democratic transition, you're talking institution building. And so very early on, we would identified the legislature, the parliament, as an institution that would help create those checks and balances that are desperately needed. Crisis Group's value is that it's one of the very few independent voices on the ground. We are saying things that perhaps others, A, don't know about and B, don't want to say. Many people express surprise that women are working in these fields, but I mean, particularly in Afghanistan and South Asia, I find that we, we are able to see a whole lot more that, that male analysts can't. Um, certainly in Afghanistan, no, no male analyst is going to be allowed into the, the female part of the house, and that's missing 50% of the, the, both the problem and the solution, really. A real impact, whether it's Kashmir or Afghanistan or Nepal or Pakistan, is in our policy prescription. We're proposing real solutions. We're not talking in the abstract. For the future, I want Crisis Group to be ever more effective, ever more influential. That's what we were created to do, be a serious policy player, influence the terms of the debate on these conflict prevention and resolution issues, both publicly and privately, have an impact ultimately on the outcome. Stopping the killing, stopping the dying, stopping the horror and misery of war and terrorist violence. For example, of course, the situation in Darfur. Crossing from the mind close to my heart. Civil society organizers usually in the context of Africa. And so we, we have diplomatic exchanges.